Hey guys, what's up? Roshi is here. Today we're taking a look at Strange Scream. This deck, I made it a couple weeks ago. It's not updated yet for Bastion Rising, but uh, I honestly don't think I'd really change anything. Um, there's not, like, the deck does what it does basically exactly the same as it did before. There's not really any new cards that go to it. So I think this is a fair deck to be uploading. Um, I think it still is pretty solid. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing it. And I think it could do fairly well against uh, some of the Yetis and more aggressive uh, decks that have been plaguing the uh, the Throne Ladder. So I wanted to release this deck, um, and let's just run through it and see what's going on here. So the idea is I wanted to use some of these big strangers like Makar Stranger and Linrise Stranger with uh, Haunting Scream. Um, I really like this card. It used to be a lot of fun. Um, I don't think a lot of people really explored the space that it got changed to. Um, you know, a lot of five drops now are pretty solid with Haunting Scream. If you're using it with Makar Stranger, it's going to come into play, um, take one of your opponent's cards off the top of their deck, and then kill something. So that right there, that's a two for one off this Haunting Scream. And uh, it helps you get around needing to attack with the Makar Stranger to kill things because they're probably going to kill the first one you play, but then, you know, when you ha start haunting, screaming them back, it will uh, whack them in the face, basically. Uh, and then we can use Dark Return to bring it back. Uh, speaking of being able to attack immediately, we have Savagery here. So we're actually able to make it even more than just a two for one. We can uh, put Savagery on our Makar Stranger originally and uh, attack with it, and then this will draw you the card off the top of their deck, uh, have Makar Stranger blast into something, and then have it also kill something. So then when you haunt and scream it back, you do it all again. So that was kind of the idea and what I was going with for this, and then I filled out the deck from there. Um, I really just wanted to play with these two cards, and then Dark Return and Savagery just made sense with it. So the rest is all basically just to fill things out. Jotun Hurler gives us extra plunder fodder, market fodder, and then uh, we can use the snowball to pop a Yeti or a Sight or something. Uh, Cartographer, um, this is one of our ways to discard Felrock, or maybe discard an early Makar Stranger so that we can curve into a Haunting Stream. Um, Maveloft Huntress is here just for some plunder and to kill things. Uh, we've got plenty of guys to buff off of, so uh, it can be pretty solid. Um, unfamiliar Interloper will fix some of our influence needs. Uh, we are playing Rindra, so getting to that Force Shadow is pretty key. We also want to have Savagery relatively early, around turns 3, 4, or 5. They, well, yeah. Maybe like turns 4 and 5 and 6 we want to have Savagery access, so uh, Unfamiliar Interloper will help out with that. Um, the smoothing out our game. Uh, Rindra is massive. <laughs> um, you can Haunting Scream him back to gain a ton of life because you'll have cast a spell. Um, also, it's just a two for one with the uh, discard. So this kind of fills our gaps. We're playing quite a bit of spells, um, enough to make Rindra worth it. And he can, uh, he can kind of be our way of uh, stabilizing against more aggressive strategies because they'll come down and they're already uh, struggling to like maintain cards, you know. Aggro decks will typically dump their whole hand, so this will help them in the process to dump their hand a little faster. This and Felrock actually. And then um, we can use Transpose at instant speed or Savagery immediately and just blast off some great lifesteal and uh, stabilize games. Um, Linrise Stranger, it's not as good on the Haunting Scream, but it will leave a 3-3 behind. But uh, it's just a solid body, and stunning things can be a good way to survive the game, so I included this. Um, and yeah, Felrock, if you've got... This is one of the main reasons to be a fine base deck, in my opinion. Um, He's quite the fine card. Uh, if he's discarded, play him from your void, so he'll just go straight into play for free. And then uh, the enemy player discards a card from their hand and then mills. We don't really care about the mill as much. Um, it does combo somewhat with Silverblade Menace, which is cool. 
But that's really not the main focus. It's the discard, which is great, and the fact that it's just it's free real estate because he's just getting put into play for free. Um, transpose markets will have Aegis a good deal of the time, and then we get access to lots of spicy cards. Aegis helps us a lot. Uh, cards like Turn to Seed are very annoying, and we don't want them going down on some of our threats, as uh, we want to be screaming them and stacking stats on them. So. Um, that is that. Uh, for Beseech the Throne, this is just more plunder, and uh, my TV likes to turn itself on when it hears me talking. Uh, lost my train of thought there. Um, Devour will let us sacrifice guys and draw cards. Um, you can do this after a haunting scream to kind of recoup the value of that creature. And then Honor of Claws is there to draw three cards, then discard a card. So you can discard Jotun Hurler, or you can discard Felrock, which would be ideal. Or you could even discard a Makar Stranger and set up a Haunting Scream. So it's just an additional way to discard things. And uh, oftentimes we won't even have Felrock in hand, but we'll rip off this Honor of Claws just hoping to hit it. And then it's like a free draw two out of nowhere that puts a 5-2 in play. And when that happens, that's just... That's a fantastic rate. You're refilling your hand, you're putting stuff on the board, you're picking apart your opponent's hand. So that's sweet. Uh, for the power base, just a clean 25. Uh, we've got Waystone, um, plenty of symbols, so a lot of our power might be entering tapped. Uh, it'll be really great whenever we get access to Silexes, as fine Silexes would be very helpful in... Uh, making some of these fine strategies a little more fine. <laughs> um, but for now, we've got plenty of tapped power. Um, but we don't need it to all necessarily be coming in on curve. We just have a few key turns, like, um, you know, turn two and, like, turn four or turn five, where we want to have stuff untapped. And we have plenty of untapped power to make sure that happens. Um, and insignias are still good as long as, you know, your opponent isn't playing Milos which just randomly shuts off this card. Anyway, uh, we've got, in the market, we've got Reign of Frogs. Uh, this will help you dunk on combo decks. Silverblade Menace for late game scenarios. Even against uh, mid-range, this can still be good, thanks to Felrock, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and sometimes even against aggro or like yetis. We just want the body and the life gain swing. So Silverblade Menace can pick up some steam there. Stealth Strike is a two-for-one, just catch-all kill spell. And Sudden Schism is pretty hilarious. Uh, if you've got the power for it, you can grab this, and then maybe if you're at seven power, you can Haunting Scream something back and then clone it. And it'll keep all its stats and won't sack at the end of the turn, which is pretty cool. And last but not least, uh, Traverse Farm. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, we can use Transpose to fetch this card, and if we do this on Curve, this really sets up our game of grabbing the car Stranger, so we can uh, do this pretty consistently. And, uh, yeah, that's the list. Um, I had a lot of fun playing it. The gameplay should be pretty interesting to watch, so thanks for watching, guys.